Okay, what's up y'all? How are we doing today? So I thought that I would sit down and walk you step by step through how I actually record my Amazon review videos. I've been doing really, really well on Amazon and it's a platform that I'm absolutely loving. It feels like it's on the hush hush because not that many people are talking about it, but Y'all know I am. I have videos down here that you go, you can get into. But today I wanted to show you a bit about how I do my videos. The majority of the videos on my um, Amazon storefront are faceless videos. I do not show my face. I will be changing that in 2024, maybe for some depending, but most of the videos that I have on there now are faceless, right? So if you are hesitant to get on camera, say for instance, you don't have a YouTube channel, you don't, you know, show your face on social media, whatever, and you want to do Amazon, this is a way that you can do it. Still make your coins, still review your products and uh, maximize Amazon as another form of income. So I wanted to just kind of show y'all because I have some products that I need to review. I recently got some new stuff from my desk back here and we are going to review them and I'm going to take you on that journey and I'm going to just walk you step by step and actually kind of show you too how I do these. So the very first thing that I do is I decide the products that I want to review. Now, I do have a strategy when it comes to this. It depends on the season, the time of year, all that good stuff for what I'm going to review because I'm thinking about those things. What's going on right now? What's popping? What's hot? What are people looking to buy? And if I have things that relate to that, um, those are the things that I want to review because I want to make coin right um but right now i literally just made a few purchases of some items that i'm just going to do the reviews on all those things because here's the thing in my life in my real everyday regular life if i need something i always look and see if it's on amazon first if there is an option for me to buy it on amazon i am always going to do that because i make money on amazon and girl, I'm reviewing everything, okay? We're, we're, we're doing everything. If it's something that I need immediately, obviously I'll look at my local store, see if they have it, but I'm always still gonna see if it's being sold on Amazon. So the very first thing that I do is decide on the products that I want to review for that day. Now, Amazon allows you to upload 15 videos at a time. So once you do the reviews, you literally can upload 15 at a time. This is if you are doing it on your computer. I'm a computer person, I do everything on my computer. Computer. I cannot stand doing stuff on my phone and squeeze and to look at I, I don't like that I do majority of all my content on my computer back here so you can upload 15 videos at a time so it makes sense right to try to do 15 videos in a sitting if you're going to do that if you're going to be creating videos might as well do 15 at a time so this is what I do I make a list of the 15 items for that specific day that I'm going to be doing now if you are new to this if you uh, are just getting started with creating content on Amazon two tips to kind of find your products because I always hear people say well I don't have that much stuff on Amazon I'm like girl your whole house probably from Amazon you don't even know what but the first thing is to look in your kitchen do you have kitchen appliances and things that you use a panini press a popcorn maker ice maker you know waffle maker a blender a juicer just so many different things that are in your kitchen that you can review that I'm pretty sure they sell on Amazon secondly look in your bathroom do you have a blow dryer a flat iron tooth uh, toothbrushes all kinds of lotion serums all that kind of stuff check your bathroom too so that's a good tip for finding new products to review or your first couple of products to review as well now, after I have decided the products that I'm going to be reviewing for that day, I get my filming space ready, right? So that's typically right here. I have no special filming space, but I tidy it up. I tidy the desk area up, clean it up so that, you know, there's not trash in the space and there's not dust. I will wipe things down, move stuff out of the way if need be, because behind this camera, I actually have some boxes that I need to move out of the way and stuff too, um, before I go ahead and film. So whatever is maybe there, you want to go ahead and clear that up out of the way so that the primary focus in the video can be the product and not your extra just stuff that you got laying around in your background. Then the next thing I go ahead and do is set up the camera. Now, again, I do not film on my, on my phone. I actually film with a little mirrorless camera that I have. So I'll go ahead and grab that out, set up the tripod and put the camera 
where I want it to be depending on the angle and stuff that I want to be filming that product with. So that's pretty simple. Set up the camera. After setting up the camera, I go ahead and set up the lights because one of the biggest, biggest, biggest things in your review videos is that you want people to be able to see the product. So I'm going to light this area and make sure that the product is visible. We can see it. We can see the detail and everything like that. So I do everything that I need to do in order to set up these lights. I actually have some very inexpensive lights that I got from Amazon and I absolutely love. I set those up. Um, usually sometimes I'll use one light, but there are situations in which I will use two. It just really depends what I'm reviewing and what space I'm reviewing something in. So I go ahead and then set up the lights. Now, after we go ahead and do that, the next thing I do is set up the audio. Now for me, I use a really, really inexpensive lavalier microphone. I just go ahead and plug that into the camera and then set it up on my shirt some way, shape or form, and then move the cord so that you can't see that in the shot because sometimes you know my hands are in the shot and then the cord can drag um, with me but I make sure to secure that cord to the lavalier microphone so that can't be seen and then after we go ahead and set up the space it's time to start filming those videos now in my review videos uh, typically I own 100% of the items that I review. I do not get things just for the sake of review right now. I don't do that. I know people do. I own everything I review. I have everything that I review. So more than likely I am able to talk about it in a manner in which is going to be beneficial. I'm telling you what it is, why I bought it, how long I've owned it, how I use it. I'm demonstrating it in a lot of cases. Some people do not take this step to like really demonstrate an item, but I do. I feel like when I'm looking at um, reviews and I'm looking to buy something, girl, show me how this thing look and how it's used and how you open it. <laughs> you know, show me the front, show me the back. I want to see what size it is. Compare it to the size of your hand, put it next to something else that's similar. I want to see the full shebang. So I try my best to give that as well. Not saying that you got to go, you know, just deep into your reviews. Cause some people don't girl, they sit there and they just, you know, tell you, whatever they want to say about the product and that's it. I choose to demonstrate them. I personally think that this creates more of a, okay, yeah, I, I'm gonna buy it now. You know, I like to think that when I look at something like that, this is what convinced me whether to buy it or not. So that's how I create my reviews. And I'm not saying I do that on everything because if I'm reviewing a shirt, the only thing I can say is girl, yes, this is a little t-shirt hoodie with lines on it and it's brown and you know, it's not much really to say, but if it's something that I feel like warrants an in-depth demonstration, then I'm going to do that. Now, after all of the reviews are done, the next thing I do is I have to take the footage from the SD card of the camera and get it onto my computer. Now I'm simply just going to put this SD card inside of the computer and then begin to export all of those files onto the computer. Then after it's fully exported in, I go ahead and edit those reviews. Now I edit my reviews in Final Cut Pro. This is how I do all of my editing. It's a program that I've just used forever. And so I continue to just edit my reviews on there. Some of them, depending on what they are, don't need a whole lot of editing, right? I'm literally just cutting the beginning, cutting the end, depending on how I did it. Some of them is like, no, they're pretty good. They can go up like that. And some of them in the cases in which I'll do B roll or demonstrations, I do have to stitch clips together. And so this is why I go ahead and drop them in final cut pro because you know, you can't just post that like that. You have to stitch all of those clips together. Now, after each of these reviews are edited and done, the next thing I need is a thumbnail because when you upload um, these, you will need a thumbnail. This is what's going to catch the person's attention on Amazon and have them look at your review video or not. So for me, I do something really super simple. I scrub the video until I find a clip that looks visually aesthetic 
and it's showcasing the product in a way in which I think is good. That could be a good thumbnail. So once I find that clip, I simply screenshot it. I, this is the easy way to do it. I simply screenshot that clip that I found that was aesthetically pleasing to me. And that is literally what I use for um, my thumbnail. Now there are some instances in where I have gotten Amazon says, oh, this is too big. The file is too big or whatever. And it wouldn't take my screenshot. And so in that case, I will simply take the screenshot and drop it inside of Canva inside of a little uh, thumbnail maker that I have in Canva, drop the picture there and then just download that thumbnail from Canva because it, it compresses the file and makes it small enough to be uploaded directly to Amazon. So that is a tip. If you have done a screenshot and you are getting that, that is a tip. Go ahead and drop that inside of Canva so that it can compress that picture um, into a smaller form. Now, after we're done doing all that, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and get it uploaded to Amazon. As I said before, Amazon allows you to upload 15 videos at a time. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and select all 15 of those videos that I did and we're going to go ahead and get it uploaded. And as you can see here, they just kind of come up in list form to where you see everything that's uploading and you can see the progress. Now, you're not going to go ahead and just submit all of these like that because as you can see, the name of the file will be the name, will be the title of your video and that's not one you want. So we're going to go over here and we're going to click on edit and then we're going to change the name of that review. So you can do something that's really catchy or you feel like people want to know about that product. I typically will do something pretty straightforward unless there is something about that product that I felt like stood out and I want to draw attention to that. Like I'll say something like, okay, what I'll say like what this feature blew me away. You know, and then I still will say whatever the name of the product review or something like that. But typically I just do a straightforward, whatever the product is, and we just leave it at that. Next, you also are going to have to tag the product that you are reviewing. Now, in the beginning, and I didn't do this in the beginning. I, I want to say that I did not do this in the beginning. I was just recording my videos and going about my business, okay? But I wanted to be a little bit more organized with my Amazon um, in the new year. So I actually started taking inventory of the things that I am reviewing. So I started keeping a running list of those items. And so when I decide on what I'm going to review, I will get the ASIN number off of Amazon because this is what you need in order to find a product on Amazon. I will take that ASIN and put there in the spreadsheet just in the future, if something happens and I need to pull something back up, I will know exactly which product I tagged. Now, if you don't have the ASIN, Amazon has several other ways that you can find that product. Typically for me, if you went ahead and you found that ASIN earlier before you started reviewing your things, that product is going to come up in your recently viewed list. You can just click on your recently viewed tab and then you can just literally click on that product and it will tag the product as well. So we're going to go in. I do that for each one of the 15, we're going to change the title and we're going to tag the product in each of these. And then you simply just submit all of those just like that as you go one by one and make those changes to each of them. So that's how simple it is. I hope that this video was helpful because when I first started, I'm like, okay, what do I do with that? What do I do with that? And so I kind of wanted to show my process. It's pretty simple and straightforward, but I wanted to show my process to how I do this and how I'm able to, you know, get videos up on a regular basis to make sure that you're continuing to increase your income over there on Amazon. If you have any other questions about how to get started with Amazon, if you're trying to get your first three videos approved, check out this video right here. I really go in depth on how to get started, how to get approved and all that good stuff.